Good afternoon, close to evening. Um, slight change to the uh, scheduled order of things. So my name is Nick. I am one of the maintainers for Hyperledger Caliper. And um, well, that's what I'm going to be talking to you about um, now. Um, out of curiosity, has anybody heard about Hyperledger Caliper before? A few hands go up. Has anybody used Hyperledger Caliper? Yes, one hand. Excellent. Um, and one final question, any developers in the audience? Oh, excellent, that's good, I was a bit worried then. So this is probably going to be more directed towards you. Um, the non-developers, around about halfway. I'm sorry, it gets rather technical, well, I say rather technical. It gets a little bit technical, but I'm going to move on. And um, so this is what I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm going to give an overview of Caliper, what it is, who it's for, why it's around. Um, and then I'm going to start talking about the architecture of Caliper, um, how you run a benchmark, what do you get once you've run a benchmark. And then I'm going to speak a little about our roadmap, uh, what we want to do in the future, and then a shameless call out to see if anyone wants to help us achieve the milestones within that roadmap. Now, content pages are really boring, and I'm going to do a shameless memory check here and try and bring you back into the presentation with a comic. <laughs> it's OK. It's not uh, an initial comic offering. Um, this is Congo Comics. It's been around a while. Um, there's actually quite a few if you want to follow the links. Um, but this is a Hyperledger Caliper special. They all follow the same format, generally ending with a horrific pun. Um, but this one is just trying and has been put together for Hyperledger Caliper for today. Um, as a shameless attempt to try and make you remember about Hyperledger Caliper. Um, yeah, so moving on. Um, Hyperledger Caliper. So Hyperledger Caliper is a performance benchmark framework for blockchains, for distributed ledgers. Um, but we're looking at testing different blockchain, blockchain solutions with predefined use cases. Okay, we've designed this uh, specifically for comparative performance studies across different blockchain technologies. As that word again, different. Um, and this is for application developers wanting to performance test their smart contracts. By and large, they're looking at the high numbers. What is my throughput? What are the latencies? And also system architects who want to investigate things like the resource constraints during a, a simulated, well, not simulated test load, during a test load. So it's with both of these guys. Um, so how do we do that? Okay. We don't focus on a single blockchain technology. Okay. We had a very good introduction about the Hyperledger technologies from Vipin earlier. We had a deep dive on Eroa. And unsurprisingly, being a Hyperledger item, we, still have, we have adapters for all of the Hyperledger um, systems. Yeah, Burrow, Composer, Fabric, Eroa, and Sawtooth. That being said, Hyperledger can and has been used to benchmark non-Hyperledger technologies. A uh, case in point here is that we have an open pull request for an Ethereum adapter. Okay. And Sawtooth. That itself contains an EVM, which means you can run Ethereum inside Sawtooth. Um, and then it'll be an interesting, an interesting benchmark in itself. What's it like in Sawtooth? What's it like um, native? OK, so the architecture, OK, we can break that really into two components. We have the, the Caliper core, which is the engine and all the modules. Um, and then we have these adapters. So I've already mentioned we have the uh, adapters for uh, the Hyperledger components. Uh, we have an interface that you can follow to provide your own adapter for any other system. And we also give you a, a CLI package for convenience of running a benchmark. Um, we're trying to make it as easy as possible to test different blockchain systems and get some performance metrics out of that. Um, so I, I apologize for this diagram. No amount of comics can make this interesting. Um, but I do want to talk through it. 
um, because this is, in its essence, how Caliper works. This is how you can view all the operations on it, and it should help you understand what you're getting and how it gets all the information for you. Um, so we'll start on the top left with a, a bunch of configuration files, which is to do with our, the configurations of what our benchmark is, uh, the blockchain itself, what we're testing against, and smart contracts. And those are the only bits of information you need. This is your contribution. This is well, it's, 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 it contains everything you are testing, the system itself and all the parts of that. Um, we feed those through um, into our Caliper CLI. And that creates two items, two types of clients. We have an administration client. Now that you could see as a, I guess, a super user client. And that feeds through an adapter. So if you're using Fabric, it will go through the Fabric adapter. If you are using Sawtooth, it will go through the Sawtooth adapter. If you're testing your own system, it will go through your own bespoke adapter. And that configures the system under test. If I was to put a fabric hat on, well, that's used to um, create and join channels, deploy chain code, and you know, it's also used later on. But um, the, the admin client is the, I guess it's the, it's the super user part of this. Now, a client factory is exactly that. It's going to create multiple clients. Well, could you create one? It could create many. And these are the clients that are driving your test load. So we come through on our client factory, and this is used to spawn our worker clients, 0 through n. And these are the clients that are driving a test load. Um, so they could be transacting with the system to um, add assets that you could be querying. It, again, it depends on your benchmark at that time. And these clients drive through a rate controller. So we have a modularized rate controller, which means exactly that. There are multiple controllers you can use. It may be you want to drive at a steady rate, 50 TPS, 150 TPS, 1,000 TPS. And you might want to do a uh, that for a duration of time or just a number of indices. It may be that you don't want to drive at a steady rate. You want to ramp the rate, so we have one of those controllers as well. It may be that you want to just load the system and see what happens. So you can drive this with a certain number of pending transactions per client. Um, that at the moment is my favored method um, just because it will test the limit of your system. You can run it for a duration, um, and you know, it's just going to steadily monitor, modify the driving TPS to suit the backlog of transactions per client. Okay, so these clients, they transact through your adapter to the system under test. And because they are issuing transactions and they're receiving responses, these are published to a performance analyzer. So for every transaction that is sent, it's recorded, the statistics of that transaction are recorded and they are collated. In conjunction with that, we have a resource monitor. So this is in part responsible for monitoring the, monitoring the system resources, how much memory is being consumed, what's the disk IO, what's going on with the CPUs, and all of that is pulled together at the end into a single report via a report generator and then pumped out. Okay. So there's a quite a simple flow through there where we're taking the configuration files, passing them through into Caliper, and we're standing up the system. We can target a system that's already stood up. The clients are driving it, collecting information, and using all of this information to publish a report which is quite nice and simple. OK, so running a benchmark. I mentioned this already. To run a benchmark, you want benchmark configuration files, benchmark test files, a blockchain configuration file, smart contracts, and a network file. It sounds a lot, but each one of these is actually pretty 
self-explanatory, and they do tie together. So what is a benchmark configuration file? This is what describes your benchmark. It's your workload. It's going to define the client type and the number, you know, how many clients do I want to drive my test load on the system, um, how many rounds, what are the parameters, what type of monitor do I want, what type of driving rates do I want. And we contain that in a single configuration file. Um, now, this is a benchmark which, in theory, you, know, is, is, you can use the same benchmark to drive different networks, so long as you've got, I guess, the, the correct test that's referenced within it. Um, so what is that? Uh, this test file here, we've called it a callback. That's a slight nod towards the fact this is very Node.js biased. And um, this is the test case that it interacts with your smart contract. Now, these need to implement init, run, and end. Every time you run a test, at the beginning, you probably want to initialize some form of parameters. The run defines exactly what is happening during the benchmark. It is how you are interacting with your smart contract, with the functions under the hood that you are actually testing. And the end is well, it's more of a cleanup process. <clears throat> so the blockchain configuration file, this is adapter-specific information, um, how you interact with your system under test. So it's the blockchain type. Um, we have some start and end commands. Um, they're also nodding towards the chain code and some general information. So you know, this is what we need in order to communicate with the system under test. If you are from a fabric background, then you know, this is where your common connection profile is referenced and is how we configure the admin client and the test clients. Now, smart contracts, okay, you've got to test something. This is the smart contract aspect, and we need that inside our um, configuration file just to know what we are deploying and what we're interacting with. Now, each smart contract's referenced there, um, and we, we do need it. So it's especially important during the deploy phases. Uh, the network file, this is optional. Um, so, as mentioned earlier, Eroa, you stand up a Docker container. Fabric, you can stand up a series of Docker containers. So we use a Docker Compose file here as an option if to stand up and tear down the networks at the beginning and end of each benchmark. Um, so we have a, at the moment a, well, it's just a, a script run, so run benchmark.js, you pass in these two configuration files, and you're done. So that will go off. Caliper will run your benchmark on whatever platform you're testing against. Um, but in the future, okay, we've recently modularized all of our um, code, and we're going to be publishing that to NPM as modules. So we'll be able to do a Caliper benchmark run. Um, we're pulling in the notion of a workspace, and then again, these the two benchmark files. So you've run your benchmark, and you get some form of output. So what do you get? OK, so there's some optional console outputs. And then you also get your performance reports. So the performance report, um, that is the, the final document at the end of the run. And console output is obviously, well, it's, it's what you get during the run. You may or may not want this running all the time. It is optional. But what it will tell you is some transaction info as the benchmark progresses, how many uh, transactions have been submitted, how many are successful, if they've failed, or what are, how many are unfinished. And then towards the end, after the each round has completed, you get some basic information. Um, so we'll send you the, the send rate, what you would, the test clients were attempting to drive the system at, the latencies, and the final actual throughput through your blockchain system that is under test. Uh, the performance report at the end, Okay, so this comes out in HTML format at the moment. Um, you get a description. So this entire column on the left, that is pulled out of your configuration files. It helps you tie things together at the end. What was I running? When? How? And then the test summary information at the top. These are the highlights. This is probably what the application developer cares about. It's the, the performance indicators that most people are, I guess, you know, driven towards making better. And that's your throughput, the 
the TPS you can achieve and the latencies. Obviously, you want low, if it wants low latencies, high throughput. But the part at the bottom under here, the test resource utilization, that's also actually quite interesting because that tells you how much you're stressing the system, you know, how much memory you're using, if you're thrashing the CPUs, how much network I.O. and how much disk I.O. So each of those are presented for you per test round. And that can also be very indicative. OK, so roadmap, running down on time, unfortunately. Um, so this is what we're hoping for. Um, we're more in the V1 alpha stage. We have our NPM packages ready to publish. Um, we've got a fixed API, and we have our Arrow adapters being updated. Um, V1 beta, there's a few things in there that's probably worth calling out. Um, that's the, the client Docker images. So if you can cast your mind back to that horrific architectural diagram, which is lines and boxes, right in the middle there, they had some clients. Now, that they don't live there. They shouldn't live there. What we want to do is move those out into a Docker container of themselves that Caliper can communicate with. The good news there is that as soon as we do that, we're no longer bound to Node. Lots of DLTs have lots of different SDKs. Okay. Node is one of them. Java is also popular. Golang is massively popular. Um, I know the uh, Corda people who were around, um, they are very Java-based. And if you skip to the other side of V1RC, we've got Corda adapter there. We would love to have a Corda adapter. And Docker clients are kind of a prerequisite for that. And we, uh, back to the V1 beta, we're talking about remote monitoring, okay, the, the time series data being returned and ideally displayed via Grafana. That would be quite handy as well. So you can have some real-time monitoring of what's going on with your system rather than just a, 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 a kind of like a, a this is what happened report at the end. Uh, the, the transient data is very interesting. Um, okay, uh, back to the V1. We've got this VM image. But moving to the V1RC, we're hoping to get a quorum Ethereum adapter um, to augment our pure Ethereum adapter that we have. And then we want to add some enhanced use cases. A um, quick note on the use cases. The idea is that the use case is the same for each benchmark. Okay, it, it needs to be apples for apples on use case. And then people at the other end, you can run something against a, a, a one system, run the same thing, the representative scenario on another, and you have a realistic comparison. That's the idea. That's the the aim of Caliper. Um, so I don't have much time left, so I'm going to jump to the final slide, which, pulling in our Congo comic from the, our resident artist, um, that's just a call out to any developers who are interested in contributing. So you know, Caliper is open source. It is under Hyperledger. Uh, you can contribute code on GitHub. We really do welcome any contributions. If you're trying to use Caliper, if you want to test things, if you want to try it out, if you're having any issues, you can raise an issue on GitHub, or you can find us on Rocket Chat, and we'll help you get running. Uh, if you have any other ideas or things you really would like to see, um, you can raise those as GitHub issues, or you can join us on our community calls. We have them weekly, and those are the, the, the links to grab all of those for the GitHub itself. Um, the Rocket Chat channel and the wiki itself contains links to the Zoom calls for you to join. Um, I'm going to leave that page up. That's, uh, that's the end of my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions you may have.